Hey everyone, we got a special guest here today, Mark Erickson, and we're going to be discussing Redux Toolkit. Redux Toolkit is a nice wrapper around a lot of things that you do normally in Redux that you're doing manually, like creating a reducer store and figuring out a way to maintain that data and manage it and pull it up and select it and all these things that you'd have to write manually, which are tons of boilerplate for Redux. This library does it for you in a very nice way. Last year, I went through and I rewrote the Redux core docs tutorials from scratch. I wrote a brand new tutorial called the Essentials Tutorial, which is a high level jump in, here's the right patterns to follow, here's the modern way to use Redux, just write your code this way and it'll work tutorial. That actually shows Redux Toolkit and React Redux Hooks as the default for writing any Redux app at all. I also then rewrote the existing basics and advanced tutorials into a new tutorial that I called the Fundamentals Tutorial. And this one still starts off from the bare basic ideas, like what is state? What is an action? What is a reducer? How do you create a store? How do you set up the UI? On the UI page, I, I do teach hooks as a default. I dropped all the mentions of container and presentational components and all that stuff that was in the old UI and React tutorial page. But like all the way through section seven, it's still writing Redux code by hand. So create store, handwritten reducers, object spreads, all that kind of stuff is still being done by hand to show you exactly the mechanisms by which all this works. And then modern Redux with Redux Toolkit basically says, and now that you know how to write this by hand, use Redux Toolkit and never do any of that by hand ever again. It's like when you write a character array to essentially be a string, to mimic a string. You're building all the fundamentals up and teaching people how they work and then saying, okay, use Redux Toolkit because in the past people did it all manually anyway. Right. In a sense, this tutorial page is actually like the migrate your existing code to Redux Toolkit page as well. I do still want to get around to formally writing a migration document at some point, but basically it's this. You switch your handwritten store setup file to use configure store. You switch your handwritten reducers to use create slice and you delete all your action types and action creators because create slice does it for you automatically. You can now Mutate, because we use a library called Immer inside. Oh, Immer is providing you an immutable, even though you're calling it mutation on the thing, it's, it's providing you a wrapper around all those data types. Right. Immer wraps your input data with a JavaScript proxy object, and then it tracks all the mutations on that value or any value inside of it. And it effectively replays them to produce a correctly immutably updated result as if you'd done all the spreads and maps and concats by hand. That's how it works. I was so confused. I was like, are you just slicing my array and then giving it back? Like, how are you doing this? Okay, that makes sense now. There definitely is a little bit of magic in here, but the trade-offs are totally worth it because the code is so much shorter. It's so much easier to read. The intent of the state update is much easier to understand, and it eliminates the chance of making accidental mutations because Immer is handling all that. You don't forget to spread a level or something. Accidental mutations have always been the number one bug in Redux apps, and Immer and Redux Toolkit eliminates that completely. We also have APIs like Create Async Thunk, which abstracts the standard pattern of dispatch an action before the request, and that make make some API call and then dispatch success or failure after the request. It automatically generates the action types, does the dispatching. You just say, here's my async call, my payload result, and then you can handle the actions however you want in your own reducers. We also have a create entity adapter API, like pre-built reducers for managing normalized state. If I want to store data as a lookup table of IDs to items instead of an array, create entity adapter has the logic for managing that. You just say, I want to run it in response to this action. We should also note that the actions are not all caps. They're lowercase function names that lowercase properties on the create slice or create entity adapter. It's been a while since I last used this. This thing right here is an action creator that accepts an argument and returns an action object, but the action type string is now an internal implementation detail. And the only time you have to worry about that is when you're looking at the Redux dev tools to see the action log. The type string is generated for you automatically based on the name in the slice and the name that you gave the reducer function. In this case, if I dispatch to do toggled, the action type is quote to do's slash to do toggled. Just by giving your case reducer functions meaningful names, you get 
meaningful action types. The way you did that, from what I understand, is that you added a dot type property to every action, but also have the dot to string. When that function is getting stringified, you've changed it to actually become that action name. Yep. The, the funny thing is, when we first released Redux Toolkit in Create Slice, we had this extra reducers thing down here. And the point of that is we want to be able to let this reducer respond to actions that were defined outside of this slice object. When we did it originally, extra reducers was always an object and you would have the action creator in here and we're using the ES6 computed object syntax, which automatically calls to string on something that's in here. Or I could have done to do added dot type to access that. The thing is that doesn't play very well with TypeScript. TypeScript does not know that to string will be implicitly called oh, here. It's runtime. Yes. Right. Yes. And so if you do this in a TypeScript file, TypeScript will yell at you. And there's no way for TypeScript to know what the TS type of the action object is. Lens Weber, the other primary Redux toolkit maintainer, came up with what we refer to as the builder syntax. Extra reducers can be a function that takes a builder parameter and then you call builder.addCase some action creator comma some reducer function. And when you do that now, because this action creator is strongly typed, now TypeScript knows what the literal TypeScript type of the action object is. It knows that to do toggled action dot payload is a number or something. Instead of passing the action itself, which would have been stringified in the runtime, now we're passing a function, which is the action creator. When that function is called by your code, it's dispatched, I should say, it will create the action and then dispatch the action. It will then call the reducer as the second argument. These two are equivalent in behavior. It's the exact same thing. We've got an action creator function generated by create slice, create action, whatever. It's just, how are we figuring out which action type to listen to and how does the TypeScript types get handled? The TypeScript obviously isn't able to call the runtime to string method on your to do. Right. It expects that you're passing a string into there and it cannot associate a string with a function type that comes with that action. Whereas to do toggled at the top in the builder case, you're literally passing the function itself. Under mm -hmm. the hood, you're getting the string out of it. And then TypeScript can infer because you're passing that function what the action type should be. Exactly. I have no clue how you made that TypeScript work, but that sounds really impressive. I will make a plug for LensWeber. I am so lucky as a maintainer to have had Lens get involved Redux toolkit about a couple years ago. Honestly, most of the Redux toolkit source code is now too TypeScripty complex for me to understand, or at <laughs> least at least to make changes to myself. And I'm very, very thankful that Lens has been able to do all the work to add a lot of the new features and, and new things over the last couple of years, because a lot of it, I wouldn't have had the idea to, and a lot of it, I don't quite have enough TypeScript deep knowledge to pull off. I've gotten a lot better TypeScript over the last couple of years, but Lens is just absolutely on another level. On that note, the other thing that is now in Redux Toolkit, we released Redux Toolkit 1.6 about a month-ish ago, and it has a brand new API that we call RTK Query. This ends the second code conversation with Mark Erickson. The next one, we'll talk about Redux Toolkit Query.